pleasure too. It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for this. Yeah. Like one of the best chai lattes ever. Oh. I yeah. love chai lattes. Perfect amount of sweetness. They yeah. are. Did you make this yourself, Amber? Of course I did. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have a barista in the house. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Well, first off, welcome to the first ever Tea with Amber. I have a chai tea latte because I have to say I'm not much of a bland tea person. I like to spice it up a little bit. So I have a nice frothy chai tea latte and I'm somewhat regretting the hot choice today. Yesterday I had an iced chai latte because it's quite warm out there and today it's a little warm as well. So I don't know, I'm going to heat it up here today. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to have kind of a, a casual conversation with you guys. It's been well, I've never actually done a live by myself before. So this is a first, and I thought hopefully it can be the first of many more to come. Uh, but I just wanted it to be very casual and you guys can hang out with me, ask me questions that you've been thinking about because I know that reading through some of the comments on social media platforms can be a bit daunting. And although I do try to get back to as many of the questions as I can, sometimes it's just a little bit overwhelming. And not only that, but you guys don't always get a chance to go back through and read the answers. So it might just be the one person that I'm replying to that gets to see it. So with that being said, I thought it would be nice just to invite you into my space and have a nice chat. And we hang can talk out. About, hang out. Hang out with all my friends. Uh, so, awesome. Yeah. I was just going to say, could you bring the microphone a little closer to you I there? I sure can. So off screen, you're hearing the Graham Wardle, who's helping me out today, <laughs> his friend Tyrone. So thank you guys. And Katie Brown's out there too. I've got such a great team. Does this sound better? Test one, two, three. The closer, the better. But yeah, let's, let's get as close as you can. That's good. Yeah. Right yeah, there. Nice and close. Right there. Do you want me to <laughs> tilt it up? Or no, no, that's good. That's okay. good. Okay. All right. Uh, I still have to have room to drink my chai tea latte, so let's there make sure that's step one. Uh, but thank you all for those who have joined us today, and thank you for those who continually are, are joining the session. And uh, this is a lot of fun. This is something that I don't usually have the time to do. So when I do, I thought it would be nice just to be able to take an afternoon and hang out. So Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for being hey. here. Um, for those who know me, know that I am very technically challenged. So I asked the experts to come in and help me because <laughs> I, I don't even know passwords for anything. I know yeah. nothing. I was like, you guys have to help me set this up because I really don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. I just look at my phone and everything pops up. Amber, so. Yeah, Amber didn't have her password for, uh, well, because some accounts now, they don't give you passwords. They give you the text code. Yes. So it's not really that you didn't know your password. I think I stressed them out a little bit. <laughs> you don't have your passwords for this? You don't have this? I'm like, oh, just, you know. <laughs> So but we can we're here. See, yeah, and we can see all your questions and comments. Amber can too. So if you have mm -hmm. questions, throw them in the comments. So right now we're streaming live to Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So uh, we can see we can see your comments and questions from all platforms. So that's kind of awesome. Uh, thanks to Graham for setting that up because that's something that I would never be able to do on my own. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've got a screen here where I can see I can see you guys. I can't physically see you, but I can see your comments. So. Um, that's great, but hello, there's a lot of hellos, and I love that you guys are telling me where you're from, because that's great. That's, that's also another thing that was a little bit challenging to set this up, is that there are so many different time zones in effect here, and I learned the difference between Mountain Standard Time and Mountain Daylight Time, because those are two different times. <laughs> <laughs> and we just had, here in Calgary, Alberta, we had a time change on the weekend, so we went from Mountain Standard Time to Mountain Daylight Time. So I found out that those are in fact two different times. So wherever you are joining me from, I thank you. And if you are in a time zone that puts you at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., because I saw a few people that chimed in and said, I'm gonna wake up extra early for this. So I appreciate that. And it's a perfect time to have tea time. Tea time. So wake up with Amber <laughs> if that's where you are in the world. <laughs> So again, thank you for being here. And I'm just looking down at all of the hellos and the comments. And we might as well get started off with a question. Sure. Yeah, we, can, we can find somebody that, uh, that has something that wants to be said. We might as well go with that one clicked. Yeah. So Sarah from Facebook asks, what's your favorite 
childhood memory? And that's so hard. That's a really hard question <laughs> because it's one of those things that you have so many moments in your childhood that I feel depict you. There's kind of those moments that make you who you are. And then there's those moments that you remember just being a lot of fun. And I have these strange like little segments that are almost like a movie that plays in my brain of these memories. And one particular that just jumped out to me now was um, my grandparents had a place in Florida and we used to go down every winter for a couple weeks and spend time there. And being from Ontario, it was always really, really cold in the winter. And I... I remember as a little kid, I'm gonna say four years old, landing in Florida and walking up my grandparents driveway and how it felt on my feet and I just remember thinking like this is this the air smells different that everything and every once in a while I'll get a flashback to that exact moment of my little feet walking up the pathway into the house and just being like this is like a whole other world I'm in and I think that it's really cool as a child to be able to experience different places um, and I was lucky that we were able to go down to a totally different climate totally different place and I just remember that really sticking in my brain of like, this is, this is still on planet Earth and it's like so different than what <laughs> I'm used to. And so I think as a child, there's certain moments that really stick out and again, like I said, make you who you are. And another one of those moments is when I was at a livestock auction with my mother. The two of us went off for the day and said, oh, we're gonna go check out this horse sale, which probably wasn't a good idea. And we fell in love with this horse named Monty. And I had never had a horse before, but I'd been taking lessons. And so we said, well, let's just go get an auction number, just in case. And of course, <laughs> Monty sold for very reasonable for a reason. And he sold to us. <laughs> and then shortly after, I looked at my mom and I was like, what have we done? And here was this four-year-old, green broke, wild quarter horse that I was now the proud owner of and maybe not experienced enough to be the proud owner of. But here we go and we're now trying to get him loaded into a trailer that was a friend of our trailer. We're like, okay, just meet us here. We got to get this horse home. And we could not load him. It took 10 of us to get this horse in the trailer. Oh, wow. And there, there was kind of a very beginning Amy Fleming <laughs> moment. And I was kind of thinking, I'm in way over my head. And my mother had had horses when she was younger. So she was familiar with horses, but hadn't been around them in a long time. And this was, this was quite an eye-opener for both of us. And I guess the good news is, in the end, that I learned a ton from working with Monty. And he learned a ton over the years. And we became a pretty good pair. And I think that that whole um, interaction between having a horse that needed a lot of work and a lot to, to get through really kind of made me who I am in the horse world too. Like I learned a ton. So I think that it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad thing, but it was maybe not the right thing in the moment. But on the other end, we got through it and maybe that made me a better Amy Fleming. Who knows? Nice. <laughs> a bunch of people on Instagram want a weather report. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I already said it's, it's too hot for a hot chai tea latte right now. Um, in Alberta, we have had, like usual, crazy ups and downs and fluctuation in weather, but we had a ton of snow up until probably three or four days ago. The ground out here was completely blanketed with snow, and then it went up to 14, 15 degrees Celsius in the last couple days. And now, of course, that snow is quickly melting and turning into rivers all over the place. So currently, I think it's sitting at around 10 degrees Celsius. And there is still a, a good blanket of snow. I'm looking out the window right now. Um, but it's quickly turning into a rushing river down every path and driveway and any area that it can get to. So I kind of expect a lot of mud in the near future. And being that being said, I have a dog bed up here and I usually have uh, rain and autumn up here, but they are so muddy, so muddy. Like I looked at them both before I came up here and I said, there is no way you guys are coming in here <laughs> just right up to their chest in mud. So I have a feeling I'm going to hose them off before I bring them in tonight, but it is nice to have that warmer weather for sure. We, uh, we need it. Yeah. I think yeah. it's, yeah. it's good. We got a follow up here from Nicole about Monty. Yes. Oh, yes. There we go. Is Monty the name inspiration for Monty on Heartland? No, actually. Um, I never really, and maybe, I don't know, maybe the writers were Googling me and my history and were like, oh, that's a good name. Um, but no, I had nothing to do with the naming of Monty the horse character, and that just came from the writers, and it was just a total coincidence. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, how about uh, this one from Rose? 
Uh, oh, that, okay, Rose. Rose from Facebook says, hi, Amber, do you plan on coming out with a cookbook? I would love to come out with a cookbook. Yeah, that'd be fun. But the thing is, I have to have time to come out with a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one of those things where it's a balance of what you want to do and what you should do and what you love to do. And I try to find a nice balance between all of those platforms and say, is this something that I really, really want to do right now that would kind of feed my soul? Or is it just something that is an idea that I should do? And I think at this point, I really want to focus on getting everything running smoothly. Um, for those who don't know, I just opened a store two years ago, and that was quite an undertaking. And it's still, it's just, and people always said this to me. They said, it's going to take two years at least before you get into a good groove. And I have definitely learned that. And I think it's just starting to get to a point where I feel like things are running smoothly and we're just, you know, kind of getting into that good groove. So maybe. The answer is I would love to come out with a cookbook in the future, but it won't be this year. Nice. Nice. Uh, okay. How about uh, we got, how about this one from Neva? Oh, do I have any superstitions? Is that what that says? Yeah. You know, no, I don't think I do. Um, there's things I always, like, you think about silly things. Like, you're walking down the street, and there's a big crack. Like, don't step on the crack. You'll fall and break your mother's back. Like, it's just little things like that that run through my head. But there's nothing that I take too seriously. Um, so, no, I don't think I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's jump over to this one. Do you have a favorite horse to work with on Heartland? That's kind of a, it's a bittersweet question because we've had so many amazing horses over, it's been 17 years, 17 years of working with a bunch of different horses. And one of the main horses on the show, Stormy, he was, he played Spartan for many, many years. And about three years ago, he started getting really bad arthritis. And actually it was, it was before that, it was about five years ago because we started writing it into the show. Cause I said to the showrunner, I was like, this is real. This horse has been with us the entire time of the show. And so has the character of Spartan. So the fact that the real horse is developing arthritis and signs of aging, that would happen to Spartan as well, right? That's just natural. That's kind of unfortunately what happens as we age and as our pets age. And so I said, let's, let's write this in. Let's create a story about this. And so we did tell that story and then we kind of tried to keep Spartan in but not being used as much. And then the last, I would say two years ago, he started to get really grumpy. And even just being on set, you could tell, he's like, you know what guys, I'm over this. I've been here for 14, 15 years, I'm done. And so then we said, okay, maybe it's best for him if we retire Stormy, but we still wanted to keep that character of Spartan there because the character is really around 20 years old. So in horse years, you know, he's not that old. That's old, but he's not mm -hmm. like on his deathbed. So we thought we don't want to just completely kill off Spartan because I didn't want that. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I have a horse at home that looks just like Spartan. He's all black. He is so quiet and gentle and calm. And his name's Hawk. And so we decided to fill in that spot with Hawk. So Stormy was retired and he's living out his days in a big pasture, having a good time. And Hawk has filled in. And, and we still carry on that role of Spartan being older and having some um, just health concerns that prevent us from using him in anything too physical. And so Hawk just gets to come and hang out with me. So with that being said, I'm going to say that Hawk now is my favorite horse to be with on set because he's my own horse and that's kind of fun. Nice. Um, awesome. We got some people on Instagram here. Miss Charlotte is asking about how rain and autumn are settling in together. They, they've settled in day one. It was funny. Um, bringing Autumn home, I thought there would be a bit of a, a transition period, but that dog instantly, it was like she lived here forever. And she's just such an old soul. I call her a porch dog because she just likes to lay on the porch and watch everything happen. Whereas Rain is the complete opposite. Rain is, if she's not in the house, she is running nonstop. Where are the cows? Where are the horses? What am I looking for? She's just running circles. And so I feel like Autumn just chaperones and just watches her run circles around the animals all day. And they do play. In the morning when I let them out first thing, they run around, they chase each other. And then I think Autumn gets played out pretty quick and she just goes back to her spot on the porch and says, okay, I'm done. I've had my exercise for the day. You go ahead, Rain. So I would say that, yeah, they, the transition of 
her living with us was very quick. And, and right from day one, Rain was just like, yep, okay, whatever. You're here. Hi. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, we got someone. We got Heather from YouTube here. This is a great system. I love that. Oh, good. I'm glad I love that everybody can join together. Yeah. Because that was another thing. It was always like, should I do an Instagram live? Should I do a Facebook live? Do I do put something on YouTube? But now it's like we can, can all, all just hang out yeah. together, which is really cool. Um, so Heather, what is the hardest scene to film, or what was the hardest scene to film on Heartland? Oh my goodness. <laughs> huh. um, I think for me and. People who have worked with animals and horses, they understand that there's a lot more challenges that present itself when you're working with animals and kids. Uh, but at the same time, I find it a lot more rewarding because there's things that happen so organically, so naturally that don't necessarily happen when you're working with two adults. Because kids and animals, they don't really have a filter and they don't really understand in the bigger scheme what we're doing. It's just kind of like they're just acting out in the moment and they're acting out how they feel in that moment. So some of the most challenging scenes have been scenes with the twins and the horses, but I also believe that those have been the most rewarding because they're the most real and they're, you just you don't know what you're gonna get and you just go with it. And there's been scenes where there's something scripted and we'll be like going towards that direction and then all of a sudden it turns in a completely different direction because it could be a horse that doesn't know what we're doing and it's just doing its own thing, but it turns out so much better because it's real and you're actually having those natural reactions where you're in the moment and you, you forget as an actor that sometimes you just have to be in the moment. You just have to live with what's happening in front of you. So I think there's challenges that present themselves with the elements, with filming outside, um, having unpredictable weather in Alberta is one of the biggest challenges and having kids, having horses. I know there was a scene that Graham and I did years ago where it was like minus 40. And I just remember I couldn't feel my face. I could hardly talk. With Victor and Whitetail. With Victor Whitetail. <laughs> and it's funny, uh, friends of mine now own that property. And I went oh, out no there. Oh, no way. Yeah, I went out there the other day and I was like, I've been here before. It was like one of those like very weird, like, I know this place. Yeah, where yeah. do I know this place from? And then they mentioned when I was in having dinner, they're like, yeah, you filmed an episode of Heartland out here years ago. And I was like, Oh, that's, right. <laughs> that's where it was. Uh, but yeah, just those moments where you can't, you, you can't predict the, the situation or the elements or things like that, I think is, is really challenging as an actor, but it's also, like I said, so real. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's kind of a balance between finding what's challenging and then what keeps you in the moment. What about when the sun's going down and everybody's mm -hmm. rushing to try and get the shot? You know what's funny? <laughs> <laughs> There's always those moments. The sun's going down. We're right at magic hour, they call it. So it's just beautiful. But, but for those who have ever tried to get a picture of the sunset, know that as soon as it starts to touch that horizon, it's gone in an instant. Yeah. And so it's really funny when you're trying to film because these things sometimes take two, two three, four takes to get it perfect. So when we're, when we're aiming for a magic hour shot, we usually rehearse, 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 rehearse. And then we wait for that perfect moment when the sun's right at that spot so that we can hopefully get it in one, maybe two takes. But that doesn't always happen. And so the pressure's on. It's almost like a live theater performance because it's like, okay, you, you don't have any wiggle room to do this yeah. again. You have exactly the amount that the scene's going to take to get it done. And if you screw up, oops. Yeah. And one of, one of our directors <laughs> uh, who directed the pilot, he's been there all 17 seasons, Dean Bennett. He's known for capturing that beautiful magic hour shot. He did the Amy Ty engagement with the sun going down. He did, there was lots of very memorable moments that Dean has done. And they've always seemed to be at magic hour. <laughs> and Dean is also famous for doing like a one-er, we call it. So there's no coverage. So there's no other angles of the camera to cut to if you make a mistake. So if you make a mistake, it's going to be in there. So what we've learned is that it is like a theater play. And if you do maybe make a mistake or say the wrong line or do something that wasn't scripted, you just keep going because you can't go back. <laughs> so I think that it also, it puts the pressure on us, but it also, again, brings that life to it yeah. because you're like, you're really in the moment and you're really focused. And we rehearse a ton before that, that moment happens. And it's a lot of fun. It is fun. I think those... 
yeah, those scenes are sometimes. And you have to be favorite. in the flow too, like. Yeah, and you have to be really collaborative with your fellow cast yeah. members too, because it's like everybody and has to be. And on. the crew, if it's a wonder and yeah. the cameraman and everything yeah. that's behind the scenes too, it's like this whole dance. Yeah, because not only is it in a wonder, but it's usually with Steadicam, and so we've got some <laughs> like all of these very cool, fluid camera mo movements too. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Brooke, um, Brooke uh, Weimer uh, yes. wishes Autumn. And happy early birthday. Yes! You know who else's birthday's on the 18th? Graham. Whose birthday's on the 18th? Cindy Busby. Cindy Busby! <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when I, because um, we don't know Autumn's exact birthday. Uh, for those who don't know, I got, uh, I got Autumn off. She was just a, a wild dog. She was a stray. And so I just, we guessed how old she was. She was about six months when I got her. And so we looked at the calendar and I was like, that puts her roughly right around mid-March. I was like, maybe I'll go for the 15th. And when I opened my calendar, I saw that it was Cindy's Busby, Cindy Busby's birthday on the 18th. And so I was like, that day, that's a happy day. <laughs> uh, so happy early birthday, Cindy. Happy early birthday, Autumn. And happy early birthday to anyone else who um, has a birthday in the next couple weeks. Uh, looks like Gina Boyer says she wants to know if she visits Alberta, what should she see besides your store? Um, Oh, cool. Okay. So question is, what in Alberta is there to see? Other than my store, of course. Thanks for adding <laughs> that. <there. laughs> um, I think that anyone who loves Heartland should visit the town of High River. High River is our fictional town of Hudson. So anytime you see Maggie's Diner or um, Lou's mayor office or anything that's happening in the town of Hudson on Heartland is the town of High River. And so we've spent a lot of time there. There's even um, the Memorial Park there that there's been a lot of different things. Amy's graduation happened there. Georgie's graduation happened there. There's been a lot of things that have happened in that park as well. So just wandering around the streets of High River, I feel like you'll you'll kind of notice things that have been in, in episodes of Heartland. Now, the ranch itself is private, so it's owned by a private family, and they don't like people coming on and taking pictures on their property, of course, um, but it's in the area of Millerville. So if you drive around Millerville, you'll, you'll be sure to see some sites that you recognize. There's also a church that Lou and Peter got married in, and Caleb and... Um, <laughs> Caleb and Cassandra, thank you, uh, got married in. And I think Mitch was about to get married there, but then that didn't work out. Uh, so that that church is in Millerville as well. And it's, it's really pretty cute and all that kind of stuff. So I would say for sure, go visit High River. Go visit my store, which is in Turner Valley. Go drive around um, Millerville. And then one place that I would recommend, and now I'm going to say this and it's going to be way too busy because you guys are all going to flock there, but everybody wants to go to Banff, but Banff has become so busy mm -hmm. that it's really hard to see anything. Any of the actual really cool sites like Lake Louise, Moraine Lake, all of those places are pretty crowded. So one of my favorite places is Waterton Lake because it's, it's a Waterton National Park. It's a little bit more quiet. It's still pretty touristy, but it's a little bit more off the beaten track. It's south as opposed to going straight west. Um, so maybe add that to your list. Waterton National Park is really pretty. And really, you can't go wrong. I think there's a lot, as long as you, in my opinion, as long as you get out of Calgary yeah. <laughs> and experience all of the beautiful hiking trails and places that you can go, um, yeah, it's it's a pretty... Sheep pretty, River Falls. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sheep River Falls is awesome. Yep. Um, okay, let's jump to another comment here. Oh, and if they visit High River, they have a Heartland exhibit. Now That's true. As well. Thank oh, you. Yeah, yeah. High River has, I think they call it the Heartland Museum, or it's yeah. the Museum of the Highwood is what it's called. Yeah. But then they have a Heartland exhibit. Yeah. Uh, let's jump to Holly's question here. Oh, so it comes right up on the screen now. I didn't even see that. I've been trying to read the little text. Uh, so Holly says, I'm curious about the Liberty work I've seen you doing on Heartland. Is this something you do? And if so, um, how did you get interested in it? Well, the really cool thing about being Amy Fleming is that I get to try so many different horse disciplines. And this is not something that I would have ever really gone out and pursued on my own. Now, for those who don't know, I've grown up with horses. I, I first started riding when I was four or five. Um, so I've always been around horses and I've tried English, I've tried Western, I've kind of done the, the bare bones of a little bit of everything. But when it came to the Liberty work, that was Heartland that introduced me to that. And the really cool thing about it 
was when I saw that that was in an episode. Well, it was actually in, started in season five. And I remember that very clearly because that was the season that I said, this is really cool. And I want to try to learn as much of I can, as much as I can of this on my own time. So I contacted Nikki Flundra, who was the Liberty horse trainer we were using on the show. And I said, Hey, Nikki, can I come down and just hang out with you? And can you teach me? Can you teach me all these things? She said, yeah, of course. And so I went and spent time with Nikki and her horses. And she taught me, you know, how to do as much as I could do so that my character could do it in the episodes. And I learned a little bit throughout that whole summer that we were filming. And then that very last episode, it would have been 518 of that season, Amy puts on a, a dark horse audition. So she has like a Liberty audition for um, Renard, I believe his name was. That's right. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of everybody that's been you, on the show. Your memory's much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of felt like I, Amber, was putting on a demonstration for all my friends on what I'd learned because this dark horse audition, we had this really cool stage set. I got to use Nikki's horses. I got to do 95% of it, which was really, really cool. And so it was sort of like, Hey guys, look what I've learned. Like not only were we filming it, but I got to show the cast and the crew kind of all the things that I got to learn throughout that summer. So I would say that that was a very memorable moment for me on Heartland. And that season still sticks out because of that. Um, so yeah, the Liberty work I absolutely loved and I've, I've kind of learned a little bit more throughout the years, but it's not something that I've dove into with my own horses. It takes a lot of time and dedication to train your horses like that. And I'm very, very lucky I get to use Nikki's horses and, um, when we're doing it on the show. So I would say that I absolutely love Liberty work and it's something I do anytime I get a chance to do it, but it's not something that I still pursue outside of the show. Nice. Um, so I'm just going to do a PSA. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking if Ty's coming back. Uh, so we're just going to clear this up. <laughs> no. No. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's bring up the next question here. Yeah, and if people have questions, some people mm -hmm. are asking because they just joined. Yep. How do I get my question posted on screen? Will you just write a comment? Yeah. So for those of you who are wondering how to get a comment, um, answered by me you just post your comment on whatever platform you're on Instagram Facebook you just type in a comment and we can see them all here so thanks to Graham and Tyrone for setting up this very cool <laughs> space where we get to see all of you and from all different social media streaming outlets so this was actually new for me I didn't know how to do this and so I, I called in the professionals um, <laughs> because I'm not techie at all and uh, yeah, I, I think this is, this is really cool and it's a great place to be able to, to hang out with all of you and well, hopefully most, I know we're not on all platforms, but I feel like we, we yeah. hit most with, with these three. Cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> and for those of you who are just joining, we're all sharing a chai tea latte together. Well, not out of the same. I actually poured them their own. They're not all <laughs> sharing mine. <laughs> um, but I, I just thought it would be fun to kind of create this tea time with Amber because I just want it to be a casual hangout. And, uh, and who knows? Maybe we'll get to do this again in the future because this is kind of fun. Awesome. All right. Jesse from Facebook says, uh, what was your first day on the Heartland set like? This takes me back. This I don't even remember the first day, <laughs> personally. <laughs> so this goes back to November of 2007. Some of you were not even born yet. And <laughs> this is a long time ago. And we were filming the Heartland pilot. So for those of you who don't know, to test out a series before we actually go to a full series, we filmed something called the pilot episode. And that's just to put in front of a test audience to say, okay, is this show gonna do well? Is it just a flop? What, what do we think? You know, what do people think about it? And so that was, yeah, November of 2007, and it was bitterly cold, bitterly cold. And I believe the very first location we were at was in Longview. And I remember this because I, I had told the directors and producers that I could ride, that I, I said in my audition, I said, yep, yeah, I have two horses of my own and all this kind of stuff, but they hadn't seen me ride yet. And here we are, day one, on set, and <laughs> Michael Weinberg, our executive producer, always says, you know, that was the moment when I was like, well, can she cut it? Can she actually <laughs> ride? And uh, I get on this horse, and the scene was I ride up into the yard, 
and Ty's there with his choker on. That was the first scene? Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure wow. because it was after that that they were like, oh, good, she can ride, we'll be okay. <laughs> and uh, it was really, really cold. And I rode up on this horse and I was like, you, you can't smoke here or something. I don't even know what I yeah, said, yeah. but I'm pretty sure it was like, like it was that. like, yeah, that was bad Ty. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and that, I think, was the first scene or at least the first day. Cause I remember after that day, I was like, I got this, like I could do this. And that whole week was extremely um, compressed with content. You know, we only had a limited amount of time to get what we needed to get. And it was so cold. So that slows everything down because back in the day, back in the day, the technology was a lot more different. Yeah. And so we had problems with things freezing up and batteries not lasting and all that kind of stuff. So. It was a little bit hectic, but at the same time, I remember thinking, this is so much fun. Like, this is such a great group of people. And that was the first time that I had met Graham and Cindy, and um, it was just kind of a neat neat experience for me. Because I was young, I was 18, it was my first time away from home, really, working. So it was it was a lot of fun. And then, then we didn't know if we were gonna see each other again or not. Yeah. Because when the pilot was done, we had no idea if there was gonna be a series after that. So uh, we said our goodbyes, and we're like, wow, that was a lot of fun, you guys, and maybe, maybe I'll see you again in the future, maybe not. And then when we got the call that season one was a go, it was like, okay, yeah, cool. Did Michael fun. Weinberg call you? Do you I, that who, I don't remember. remember. I, I feel remember. like my agent called me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. M- then, Weinberg called me, and I remember I was in my uh, bedroom at the time. He's like, so, whatever. You know, he's like, yeah. was, we're going. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? He's like, yep, it's happening. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of comes as a surprise because I had I had shot pilots in the past that didn't yeah. go anywhere. So I kind of was thinking the same thing. I was like, ah, it's one of those things too good to be true. Like that was fun, but you know maybe we'll never do anything with it. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Seventeen years later. <laughs> uh, Barb five five three two on Instagram says, um, if there's anything from the Heartland set that you could take, what would it be? That's a great question. And you know what, Barb? That's changed every year. Like there's always something I'm like, oh. I want that or I want that and um, there's definitely things in the Heartland house that when the show finally concludes I I want to put my name on and say I would like to have that as like a, a memorable thing there's a few things in particular um, I love the stained glass I think everyone does in the front it's very like Heartland iconic is the horse horses running in the front window um, also there's a, a Heartland um, branded cowhide hook on the wall it's like it's got the heartland brand right into it and it's got like coat hooks in it i think that's really cool so there's those things and then of course there's bigger items like ty's truck and things like that that you're like this is so iconic heartland and uh it would be really cool to to have some of that stuff kicking around good question yeah thanks barb um let's bring up emily here Emily, what are the biggest differences in your personality from Amy's? I should ask Graham this because <laughs> it's hard to know. <laughs> are there any times it's difficult to get into character or anything you haven't agreed with Amy's actions or decisions? That's a really good question because I feel like Amy and I are very similar, but I think Amy's more dramatic, but that might just be me. But I also, <laughs> I also feel like Amy's more reactive but that's because it's a television series. If Amy wasn't reactive and wasn't dramatic, she would be pretty boring. So I think you have to have those character traits on screen so that you have someone to ride the highs and the lows with. So I think the biggest difference between us, A, is that Amy is the miracle girl and can do anything with horses. (laughs) I'm not there yet. (laughs) Um, And I just think that, yeah, Amy's a little bit more she has more reactions to things. I'm a little bit more like, I don't know. I don't ride the highs and lows as much. I kind of float in the middle. Yeah, more zen. I guess. Yeah. I don't know if I call myself zen, <laughs> but Chill. I definitely, I think I'm less reactive yeah, yeah, than yeah. Amy. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, how about um, any more Hallmark movies? Oh, you know, <laughs> it's funny. So last year at this time, I was in Newfoundland filming a Hallmark movie and it was really, really, really cold. And I'm from, well, I say I'm from Alberta. I'm originally from Ontario, but I've lived long, I'm from here, and I am so used to doing cold. I never experienced cold until I experienced East Coast cold. And I feel for you guys. 
You say, oh, it's minus 30 there. I don't know how you're surviving. Minus 30 here is warmer than minus two in Newfoundland. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. No, because it's this super damp cold that just chills you to the bone. And I couldn't get warm at night. We'd be filming outside and then I'd come in and I would have to have like a half an hour hot shower just to get the chill out of my bones. And so that was one thing that I was like, this is, this is hard. It is really hard to focus on a job when you're so cold. And also we couldn't dress for the weather like we do on Heartland. On Heartland, I think, yeah, we're still in jeans and a coat, but they usually try to put us in bigger, heavier coats when you can see that it's cold out. I was in like this, like I was in like a jean jacket and a t-shirt. I'm like, it's really cold. <laughs> and they're like, okay, you look great, it's fine. Um, so, so to answer your question, if it works out and it's uh, milder and I'm not freezing my butt off somewhere, then I would 100% be open to it. But I think right now I'm trying to focus on keeping my store going at a nice smooth pace and having some time with my family and friends and my animals. So I really like the winters just to have kind of for me, me time. And um, I'm still busy enough as it is. So I'm never bored. Let's put it that way. Awesome. We got Roger here asking about your busy schedule. Uh huh. Do your and Sean's busy schedule, with your and Sean's busy schedule, how do you handle your time at home? I don't have any time at home. That's how I end up. <laughs> um, I think that it is about prioritizing and it's about making time for each other and the things that you really want to do. Because if we didn't make time, we wouldn't have any. You know, I could be at the store all the time. I could be um, just busy all the time. And I think that it's what you put into, okay, so we're going to meet up for dinner on this night and we're going to have this friend and this couple and we're going to hang out with them and then this time we're going to hang out with this, these people and it's making time for the the things that you enjoy I think is the most important and making time for even going for a ride and that's something that I don't always prioritize because I'm like okay I've got a million things to do like it's going to take me by the time I get saddled and ready and go out it's going to be a couple hours and do I really have time for that but then I get out there and I'm like yes, I need to make time for things like this because this is what kind of refuels me. This is what makes me feel content. So I don't know. It's a, I, I, I'm not really answering your question. I think it's just in the end, you have to just sit down and make the time. And it's important to do that too. Mm -hmm. on Heartland. Oh, that's a good one. And so I think that trying to go back and think of everyone that has appeared on Heartland and who would be my favorite, that's, that's a hard one. Maybe, <laughs> I can't say an animal, right? <laughs> <laughs> you could, that's technically yeah. a guest yeah? star. Okay, that's true. Um, we've had some really good like reoccurring roles, but like specifically guest star. Uh, my friend's Border Collie Deeks played a role on Heartland and he was the dog that was missing in the flood and there was this whole thing where this couple couldn't, they, lo they lost their dog in the flood and they couldn't find him. And there's this moment where he jumps out of the vehicle at the end, Scott finds him and he's like, we found your dog and he jumps out and he just looks so happy. And he's just like, hi guys, I'm here. And like that moment to me, when I watched it, I was like, that just made the whole episode. Like, good <laughs> job, dog. Uh, so I think that there's different, different animals that have really made an impactful um, like they, they make the character and that's, that's really cool. But guess, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to think back. I don't want to leave anyone out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat Socks Bruins says, what is your proudest moment since owning your store from Instagram? That's a good question too. I think something that I've learned that I needed to learn at this point in my life was how to delegate. And up until now, I, I, I was not good at delegation. I am the person that's like, no, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to somehow fit it into my schedule and I'm going to make it work. And it was kind of wearing me out. I think that anyone who is a busy person and just wants to try to do everything themselves knows that that's not, it's not sustainable, right? You can't keep that up for a long period of time or you're just going to wear yourself out and you're going to just not be happy with the things that you're doing. So that was my biggest learning curve in opening a store was trusting the people 
that I bring into my team, which I love my team. I'm just going to say that right now. I have an incredible team. I trust them 100%. I know that they'll make decisions that I that align with my thinking. But it was hard for me to just give that up, to be like, no, you know what? You can do this order. You know, you can you can do this this task or whatever it might be. Because I thought, no, it's my store. Like, this is my responsibility. I need to do it. And it was never that I thought other people couldn't do it. It was just that I always felt it was my responsibility. And I didn't want to put that onto other people. But I think that there's a nice balance there when you do have a team that you trust, that you can say, hey, you know what? You do this one. You're doing a great job. Or uh, how about you? You can handle this. And just little tasks that I always would have tried to do myself that I've now learned that delegation makes everything run smoother. And also you can get the right people Mm -hmm. that know what they're doing that actually can do it in half the time that you can do it. And that's like today, like I I brought you guys in because I was like, I don't, this is... You could do this number, you could totally... Nope, nope. (laughs) I'm just, I, for me, technology scares me a little bit, to be quite honest with you. Like I'm, I don't have the interest in it to dive in and learn. Mm. So for me, I'm like, no, I don't, it's sort of like if I gave you a horse, you'd be like, okay, what now? (laughs) Right? You'd be like, uh, what do I feed it? What do I, like... Well, I know it eats grass. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that poor horse. He'd be like, um, so it's winter and nobody bought hay and um, I don't know. <laughs> you're probably right. You're probably right. So I think that it's if you're, if you don't understand something, sometimes it's better just to bring in a team of people that do understand it because they're just going to be, and they're going to be able to help you through it. And, and then as you do it, you learn. And so just like if you had a horse and I was like, hey, you should probably feed it this yeah. and you should probably do this. Then over time, you'd get more comfortable and you'd be like, oh, okay. Got it. I can do totally. this. Mm-hmm. Totally. Uh, let's bring up, um, I, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this name, but I like the question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, do you have a ritual before shooting a scene? No. I am like, I'm kind of a fly by the seat of my pants person. <laughs> I really am. I'm not a big prepper as far as if, if there's like a big scene coming, I kind of just want it to happen organically. I don't want to put a lot of thought into it. I don't want to like specifically prep or have a ritual or anything like that uh again like graham you could probably answer this better than me but i don't think that there's any specific thing what about when amy went blind did you how did you how did you prepare for that that's good um i don't know close my eyes (laughs) (laughs) i think for me it's more about how would i feel in that situation Mm. so it's like i would be scared i would be thinking is this forever i would be like there's all those things so it's not so much about for me it's not about talking to certain people or understanding what it would be like for someone else it's more about putting myself in that situation and saying how would I feel how would this affect me Mm. and the relationships around me so maybe that would be the preparation but ritual which was the question I really don't think there's nothing like I don't go and some people want to be in their own space and they need to not talk or have any big jokes before a big deep scene whereas for me like I don't think I I really do that but mm. yeah well thank you un, how, do you, how did you say it Tyler? Oh. Uh, un soup soup con de con, yeah de sorry <laughs> you said it better than I did <laughs> uh, let's bring up this question here from Ashton do you still milk your cows I got asked this today when I was making this chai tea latte yeah. um, <laughs> so I my cows are my pets um, so I, I don't milk them year round cause I feel for them, it's best just for them to dry up and hang out and do their own thing in the winter. Uh, but when they have calves on them, yes, I, I, this would be raw milk in my cup with my chai tea latte right now. So I think that for me, it's a timing thing as well. Um, my cows, the cows that I have now, um, I have two Jersey milk cows and one is expecting in May. So she will be producing milk in May. And I always leave their, cal- their calves on them. So I don't, I don't pull calves. I let Jersey cows have so much milk. And if I need a little bit, it doesn't affect them or their calf in any way because they're just producing so much. So if I'm busy working on set and I don't have time to milk my cow every day, then she gets uncomfortable because she's producing too much milk. Her calf can't drink as much as she has. Um, it's just, it's not comfortable for her. So what I usually do is go out and find an orphan calf that's lost its mom 
and I bring it home. And then basically she raises two calves and then she has a perfect amount of milk for the two of them and they get a friend and little sister or brother get to hang out with. Um, so yeah, the, the, I guess the question to answer your question, when I have the time, I love milking my cows. I separate the cream. I make butter. I make, I haven't made cheese yet, but I make ice cream. So good. Uh, yogurt, things like that. Uh, so it's very rewarding, but it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I can't, well, I can't have two jobs and be milking cows every day. So, um, maybe, maybe when I only have one full-time job, I'll be able to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Uh, we got a question here from Jeffrey about your earliest recollections of acting. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, what is your earliest recollection of acting roles? And what um, was the impetus to decide to become an actress? That's a big word. What does that word mean? Uh, like the, the uh, inspiration? like yeah. the Impetus. Yeah. I'm going to start using yeah. that in my <laughs> daily life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I started acting when I was about eight years old, but on theater, or in theater, I should say. So on stage. And I started far before that acting in front of my parents, who I would make sit on the couch and watch these plays that I would put on for who knows how long, and that I was making as I went, and I had all the stuffed animals in my room laid out, and all the dolls on different chairs, and I would be putting on a full play, um, probably starting at the age of three or four. And then my parents were finally like, we better give her a real audience, because we are tired of sitting here and watching her. (laughs) So they... (laughs) Enrolled me in a, a local theater company for kids, which was great. It was called the Original Kids Theater Company. And I, yeah, I just, um, I started on stage and had a lot of fun with that. And then when I was 12 years old, I moved on on screen to the world of film and television. And my very first acting role on screen was a kid show called Super Rupert. And I had <laughs> so much fun. I think that was the best introduction because I was a kid so I was 12 years old and the majority of the cast members were all 12 11 12 13 years old so we were just like this super fun mob of kids that got to go to work and do a grown-up job every day and just have a ton of fun so that was my first experience into the world of acting on screen and I think that really set me up for where I am today because I had so much fun with that that I was like okay I can keep doing this this is good nice we got a question here from Aunt Reed on Instagram. She says, will you get another Betty someday? Aw, so Betty was my alpaca. I had Betty for many, many years. She was such a sweetheart, and we lost her just due to old age. And I don't know if there's any replacing Betty. She was pretty cool, and I have been around a lot of alpacas since, and none of them are anything like Betty. So... I don't know. I feel like if I got, and you can't just get one alpaca. That's what was different about Betty as well. Alpacas are herd animals, just like horses, anything else, but they really, they do well with at least another alpaca or two or three in their little herd. Betty came to me as a solo alpaca. She had been living solo with the cows and she instantly just bonded with my cows. And I think she thought she was a cow, like she was raised (laughs) in a, in a cow herd and so eventually I was like, especially after listening to a lot of people who knew a lot about alpacas, they're like, you can't have her alone. Like, that's not fair. So I went out and got two more alpacas. Betty hated them, hated them to the point where they would come up to the feeder and she would look at them and leave <laughs> and get so mad. She's like, why are they here? And then she would go lie with the cows or they would, you know, come up, she'd be laying in the shelter and they'd come up and lie down beside her. She'd get up and leave. She's like, I don't want to be anywhere around you guys. Like, I am not an alpaca. I don't know what you're doing here. And so she was a very unique creature, and I called her Betty the babysitter because she used to always be with my calves. If they were young, she would lay with them wherever they were, and my cows adopted her as their babysitter, and they would be like, okay, the calves are good, they're with Betty, and they would go off and graze, and they would be way far on the other end of the field. But they knew that their calves were being looked after by Betty. And there was this this really cool understanding in the herd that that was Betty's job. You know, they would get up and leave, and she would hang out with the calves. And there's one story that I love to tell, and I'm going to tell it quickly, because it just, it shows you just that, that maternal instinct that animals have. But there was this really bad snowstorm, came early. It was in September, and I had had a late calf, so just a, a two-week-old calf, Jersey calf, Um, that was born and I went out to check on them in the snowstorm. Nobody was ready for it because like I said, it just came early in September. 
And the mama cow was in the shelter, bedded down with all the other cows. And I'm looking around. I'm like, oh, no, the baby's not here. Like, where is the baby? The snow was coming down. The wind was blowing sideways. I'm like, this is not good. So I start trudging around the field. And this was in a 100-acre field. So, you know, and it's dusk. So it was just getting dark. I'm like, where is this calf? And then I look out in the very far corner of the field, and I see Betty lying down in the snow. I'm like, hmm, that's Maybe the calf's over there. So I trudge all the way out to the far corner of the field, and all I see is this little calf's nose and ears sticking out from underneath Betty. And she was curled up on top of this calf, keeping it warm in the snowstorm. And that was just like, from that moment, I was like, Betty, you're the best. You're the like, best. It's just, it was such a heartfelt moment, and I ended up yeah. picking the calf up and walking it back, and Betty followed. And for those who know alpacas, they make this little noise going, Rrr. It's like this really strange little like purring almost. Hmm. And the entire time I'm trudging across the yard with this calf, she's right on my shoulder, like so worried about this thing. Um, so she was pretty special. So I don't know if I want to go into getting another alpaca anytime soon because I just feel like I will always be judging them. Like, You're not Betty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're getting close to the end here. Um, I got a couple more questions. Are you good to keep a couple more? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Okay, so we got Hannah King. Mm -hmm. Hannah says, what is it like for you knowing that Heartland means so much to so many people? Did you ever think it would be as popular as it is? That's, a, that's another heartfelt question for me because I never knew that we were going to go past our pilot episode. And then when we were filming season one, I never knew if we were going to have a season two. And I, like it just it kept going. And every year... Not that I was surprised we were renewed, because I, I do believe that Heartland is a really good show, and, and I know why it resonates with people, but the fact that it has touched so many people around the world, I think is what really blows me away, because it's not just, you know, we create the show as a Canadian show, and it's very much life on an Alberta ranch, and the fact that people from all over the world have come to me and said, your show means a lot to me, it's really taught me a lot is really cool because we're, we're just telling life on an Alberta ranch. You know, this is not really some of these um, values that the show has are obviously universal and they resonate with people from whatever your upbringing it is, whatever your culture is, wherever in the world you live. Uh, and you might be in a totally different atmosphere. You might be downtown somewhere with a very busy, hectic um, city life. And you look at Heartland, you're like, that's really cool. But I understand it because I understand the family values and I understand what it means to to have that. And that's that's one of the things why I think Heartland is so special is it doesn't matter where you're from, who you live with, what you've done in your life, or even if you've ever owned an animal, you can watch the show and say, wow, this is this is really cool. This makes me feel really good. And I, that's the kind of content we need more of because there's a lot of shows that you watch and the whole time you're like, oh, I don't feel good. Like, <laughs> this is really stressful. Yeah. And I think when you watch Heartland, it's, and Cram said this before too, it's just like a breath of fresh air. It's like a, it's like a home cooked meal, right? You just feel satisfied. You feel good. And I think that's the feelings you should get when you do things in your life. I don't think you should be doing things that you feel uptight and whether that's watching a show whether that's um an activity you know something like that where it doesn't feel right don't do that move away from that that's your body telling you that it's not the right fit for you mm -hmm. and so i think that when you watch heartland you feel good and that's a feeling we should all have right so i think that's probably why it's resonated with so many people and in all areas of life too not exactly. just entertainment your food your friends it Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I say. To, people always say, oh, you, like you seem so content. You seem so. And it's because if something doesn't feel right, I don't push into it. I don't keep going down that road. And like you said, if it's, it's a group of friends and you're saying you're like, I don't feel like myself. If you don't feel like yourself, that's your body saying it's not the right group of people for you. Um, same thing in a work environment. If you're going there every day and you're saying, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It might not be the right fit. And I'm not saying that work isn't work, because it is. There are days on my job where it's cold, and I'm tired, and I'm sick, and I still have to show up, and I still have to do my job, and all of those things. It's not always wonderful. But when I think about my job overall, I think, this is the best job ever. Like, I have so much fun. So that's why I push towards that. Whereas if I wasn't feeling that, I'm not going to push towards that. 
Amen. I love that. We got some more uh, questions here on Instagram. Um, Kim Cole 71 says, do you have any plans for another children's book? I would love to do another children's book. I, that is one thing growing up in high school, I didn't love school, but I loved creative writing. That was my favorite class. I always enjoyed it. I would write little short stories. And so that kind of came to life when I wrote my first children's book, because I thought this is like writing a, a short story. Like this is fun. I can create these characters and I can have fun with it. And so I've now written two children's books. There's Where'd Cow Go and Where'd Turkey Go? And I would love to write another one. But again, we talked about having the time and prioritizing what you need to do, what you want to do, and what you have to do. And I think at this point, there's a few other things that I need to kind of get ironed out before I can move on to another one. Cool. Uh, Dwayne Ricks says, what are you going to be doing in Chilliwack in April? The Can-Am equine event. Don't. So I will be in Chilliwack, BC on um, the 13th of April, I believe. And it's so whatever that works out to be. And I'm going to be doing some fun Can-Am stuff. So we've got uh, an evening show with Piper Yule, which is going to be super fun because Piper's very talented. And I'm excited to work with her because I've met Piper, but I've never had the chance to work alongside her. So that's going to be really fun. So yeah, if, you, if you're in the British Columbia area, you're going to want to head to Chilliwack. Um, we got uh, uh, Ellen says, uh, you need to write a children's book about Betty. That would be actually... Yeah, that would be special. That would be cool. It's hard to pick, too, because I've had so many animals in my life that have had such an impact on me, so it's hard to really You need pick. to create a TV show. Okay. A children's TV okay. show. Okay. <laughs> life After With Heartland is going to be very full. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, we're almost done here. Um, Cindy Busby says hi, so she's on the Instagram live. She says hi, hello. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> we wished you a happy birthday earlier, but I don't know if you were on, so... Um, Happy early birthday. Happy birthday, Cindy. Um, so yeah, Tea Time with Amber. We're, we're about at our hour mark here. Is there anything you want to wrap up with or share with oh, people? I think I just want to, I want to thank this community because honestly, I wouldn't be where I am without you guys. And it's also such an uplifting community. Social media can be a very dangerous place and it can be a very dark place for a lot of people. And I feel like all of the social media platforms that are related to Heartland and myself have been very positive. And so I just want to say thank you guys for, because it's you that creates that atmosphere. So thank you. And thanks for being very community minded because there's a lot of people I know that when someone's down or if someone has a birthday or whatever it might be, they're there for them. And I love seeing that. And I love seeing the interaction and the friendships that you guys have created over the many years that you've been a part of this community. So just from, from me and all of us, and, and thanks to my team who has made this possible, has made this uh, segment possible, because I would not be doing this without you guys. So thank you. And just overall, go enjoy yourselves. Get out there. Go. It's a sunny day here. I don't know what it's like where you are, but... Get out and just enjoy the weather, enjoy some fresh air, and enjoy the company around you. Take care, everybody. Awesome. Adios. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>